A patron asked me just the other afternoon if we had any books on the Cherokee little people. Well, that phrase caught me by surprise because I hadn't heard it since childhood and even back then had very little recollection of who they were. But as a descendant of the Scots-Irish and at least one sixteenth Cherokee, I knew I had to know more about these leprechaunish little people on this side of the Atlantic. Were they more? than just a remnant of rumor. So as the elder Cherokee storyteller used to introduce his narrative by saying, this is what the old men told me when I was a boy. I know not how the truth may be, but I tell the tale as was told to me. The little people, and I'll try the Cherokee pronunciation of Yunwiusti, were originally called moon people because they only came out at night. They were said to predate the arrival of the Cherokee in the southeast by many, many years. However, it would appear over a number of years that a respectful relationship of peaceful coexistence has been established. They hold a significant place in tribal oral history. It's said that especially gifted or selected young Cherokee as they were growing up were encouraged by their parents and the elders to go out alone and talk with the young Wiusti. Thomas E. Mails was a fine artist and researcher. He authored and illustrated the Cherokee people. He writes that the young Wiusti preferred to make their homes in rock caves on the sides of mountains. They were a handsome and well-shaped race, hardly reaching up to a man's knee. Estimates of heights go from knee-high all the way up to 18 inches to over three feet. They had long black hair that almost fell to the ground. Those who spent years, if not their whole lives, studying the young Wiusti say there are three different clans. All are great wonder workers. The Laurel people are said to spend almost half their time drumming and dancing. Although they're a fun-loving group, they're pranksters at heart and especially enjoy playing harmless tricks on humans. The dogwood people are the kind and helpful ones. It's said whenever someone becomes lost in the mountains, especially a child who's wandered away from their parents, the dogwood clan will find them, take care of them, and the next day return them home safely. They've also been known to harvest corn or other crops overnight when the human is ill or just hit by a sudden adversity. Sometimes the drum of the little people is heard in lonely places in the mountains, but it's not safe or wise to search for it. The rock people are considered to be the mean-spirited ones. They do not like to be disturbed at home and are known for casting spells on strangers. The spell so bewilders the stranger that he becomes disoriented and can't find his way. Even if he were to get back home, he's forever like a person dazed or in a trance. When the hunter finds a useful object in the woods, such as a knife or grinding stone, he is to say, Yunwiusti, I want to take this because it might belong to the rock people. And if he did take it and did not have permission, they would throw stones at him. During the smallpox outbreak among the Eastern Band of Cherokees just after the Civil War, a sick man wandered off into the woods. His friends searched but could not find him. After several weeks, he returned on his own said the little people had found him and taken care of him in one of their caves and they tended him until he was cured. In about 1895, two hunters went behind the high falls near the headwaters of the Okunalufti River within the Kuala boundary. They found a cave with fresh footprints of the Yunwuyusti all over the floor. About 30 miles from that site, about 40 years later, New Deal construction had begun on Western Carolina University. The late Walter Middleton was one of those who was involved in that project. 
Years later, he talked with Mary Joyce, a journalist, about the mysteries uncovered by the crews there. Joyce recalls his interview in her book, Cherokee Little People Were Real. Joyce says that he began by telling her about the Cherokee Little People just to build up her curiosity. She insists that after talking with him, that there is concrete evidence that the little people actually exist in the region. Now, they found skeletons. One of the stories that I found extremely interesting was they found a little skull. It was a child-sized skull. And one of the science professors just kept it on his desk, almost like a decorative paperweight. And he just said it was, you know, a child's skull from the, from the mound. One day, the teacher came in and looked at it real closely and said, this isn't a child's skull. It has all its wisdom teeth. So if you've, if you've been through that, you know you have to be 18, 19, 20 to start to get wisdom teeth. And the little skull has the wisdom teeth. Joyce was intrigued by the fact that Middleton and a few other men who actually worked on that construction site found little tunnels. According to her, the tunnels were carved out of red clay and were arched at the top, but were just a few feet high, much smaller than the average size man could fit through. There's no indication where the tunnels led. Depending upon with whom you speak, it appears the skull and bones and other evidence reside in a secret vault on campus or were sent away to the Smithsonian. Among the Cherokee full bloods, you can still find some who continue the ancient healing and storytelling practices of their ancestors. They have respect for the young Wiusti. Thomas Mayles writes in his book, The Cherokee People, that sometime around 1990, a woman went to visit a certain man at his house in the country, knowing that no one else would be around because he lived alone. But he wasn't there, so she left. Later on, she saw him. And he told her he was sorry that he had missed her when she came to call. Well, obviously startled, the woman said, how did you know that I was there? The man smiled and told her that the little people take care of his house and watch over it when he's away. And it was they who told him she had been there and even described what she wore and the color of her car. There are many stories about the Yunwujusti, many rumors. But one thing that I would like to make perfectly clear, if there is a rumor because of her diminutive size, just 60 inches, that Dolly Parton is a descendant of the Cherokee Little People, there is absolutely no evidence supporting that claim. Among the things we do know for sure is that like Bigfoot and God, just because we can't see them doesn't mean the Yunwujusti don't exist. For more information on the Cherokee or whether your family legends and stories can withstand a genealogy search, visit us at the Sevier County Maples History Center on the third floor of the King Family Library or check out the Museum of the Cherokee across the mountain over in Cherokee, North Carolina.